But I want to begin with harnessing our group coherence. In these last few days, the fear and panic around the coronavirus seems to continue and grow. And when one or more are gathered, their focused intent can make a difference. And I wanna ask all of you collectively with me to focus our intent on a little place in China called Wuhan. So I want you to focus your energy, connecting in with your heart center on Wuhan in China. And I want you to feel the energy behind these words. I see benevolence there. I see benevolence there. I see benevolence there. And I want you to expand that focus surrounding Wuhan and into China. And I want you to feel the energy behind, I see benevolence there. I want you to expand that focus to include Southeast Asia and focus on the energy of seeing benevolence there. And expand that focus to Europe. I see benevolence there. And expand that focus to all of the land within the Northern Hemisphere. I see benevolence there. And we'll do one more expansion of focus to include the lands in the Southern Hemisphere. I see benevolence there. And I ask you to put your hand on your heart center to connect in to a situation that really makes us realize we are a global family. We have brothers and sisters in every corner of the globe. And as our hearts connect with every brother and sister, we say these words to each person. I see benevolence there. I see benevolence there. I see benevolence there. And we'll just let that wave of compassionate action and benevolence flow out across the planet from one place to another. So let us continue the benevolence presence that we are bringing from our hearts from this day tour touring through a Gaia land that is full of benevolence breathing into benevolence feeling our entire being with benevolence benevolence that is presence in every moment of our lives whether we see it at the moment or not it is always there let it expand it strongly into our field now and breathe more through it feeling it in every cell of our body in every cell of our field in all that we are and from the source that all that is that divinity that we come from that washes us that loves us that softens our hearts that filled our hearts with compassion and love breathe more from it as one group 
in Iceland going through sites that we visit of mountains and geysers and waterfalls allowing the benevolence of Gaia to fill us, to fill our hearts, to fill our mind and body and spirit and soul. Let it be fully present in you now. Feeling the earth beneath you, connecting with all the elements around you, with the cold air and with the snow, Simply benevolence, just focus on that, just feel that, just allow for that to expand in you more. Breathe, breathe, and breathe through it. And let us open our hearts in benevolence to the other side of the veil to hear the words of wisdom, honoring, love, and benevolence from Kryon. Greetings, dear ones. I'm Kryon of Magnetic Service. This is the second message from the beautiful Iceland. The group finds itself <laughs> in a place well, they're not going to be for long. And you might think, well, that's because Kryon is going to make this a short channel. <laughs> that's not exactly correct. <laughs> Minus three and counting Celsius is the temperature. The sun is going down, and my partner won't last long. <laughs> There'll be a channel, perhaps some insights, every single time we sit and give honor for the process. You're in a pristine place, dear ones, although you might be cool at the moment. I want you to think for a moment of where you are, who you're with. And like so many times before, I'm going to give these channels that was that was interesting <laughs> now my partner had his eyes closed <laughs> but i know what just took place <laughs> minus 3 celsius and swimmers just went by <laughs> barefoot must have been Icelanders. <laughs> Occasionally we'll give themes, and the themes will be short ones, insights, and these next seven channels, this is one of seven, will be that. And we're going to make each theme a letter of the word Iceland, the seven letters. Some of you, knowing the themes of Kryon, can guess what the letters are going to stand for. But today, we're going to start with I. This one is so difficult because it's a fleeting one. It's not, it's not substantive, but dear ones, I want you just for these few moments to examine something with me. There is profundity here when you examine intuition. I have a question for you, and you can ponder it or not. You can think about it seriously or not. What is your intuition about what might be happening within you? Here is the question. Is it possible there's something larger than you, within you, around you? And if so, how would that possibly be true? 
Science looks at you in a very straightforward, logical way. You have synapse. You have the heart-the-brain connection. You have all of these things that the animals do, and yet there is something more. What if this something more is with every single human being? Now, I'm going to tell you something. That up till the shift that is occurring, most of those who would entertain this question are older. These are not questions that you will find the millennials asking themselves until now. Part of the shift is that young people are starting to ask the same question. Is it possible that within the human being, intuitively, there's something bigger? How is it possible? Here we get into a non-linear idea. Non-linear because it is not something that you can itemize. It isn't anything that you can, can put in a formula. Most of those listening to my voice right now know that when you're afraid that you can call on something bigger than yourself, it's not necessarily even that which is, which is God or that which is, which is above you. It's, it's within you. Sometimes when, when you're going to sleep, perhaps you could just raise your hand right there where you lay. And in that gesture, you are saying, thank you. Thank you for that which is bigger than me. And intuitively, some of you will get chills. And if you're anxious, you'll feel a hug. If you're afraid, perhaps you'll feel the, the beautiful arms of Gaia or spirit or something else encompass you in a way that says all is well. Intuition is real. And it starts to talk to you about something bigger that is inside. Some call it a soul, whatever that means. But then the next question, the one after that, is once you start feeling it, you say, why is it there? What is it for? Is it real? Am I going to have it for the rest of my life? All of these linear questions have to do was something that even Scripture has identified. Peace beyond comprehension. Peace that passes all understanding. What is it? Intuitively within you where you can raise that hand and then all is well. This is what light workers are discovering. But the next question is what do you do with it? Is it just for you? Is it just so you're going to feel better? No matter what it is, bigger than you, that soul, that connection. What are you to do with it? I'll tell you right now. Light worker listening to this, if you believe intuitively that that is real, that there's something so much bigger than you within you, I'll tell you. That allows you to project it all around this world. See benevolence there. Take this light and project it to wherever you think it should be. To soothe the frustrations. To make those be able to go to sleep and say all is well. That's what it's for. Oh, it doesn't just surround you for you. It's a tool. The longer you live on this planet, dear ones, the more you're going to use it and see it, believe it, and understand how big it is and how beautiful it is. These are the words I give you for the letter I. Intuition about something within you which is larger than you that every single one of you have, and collectively, it's enormous. It's beautiful. Think on these things even before you retire this night. And perhaps 
Some of you might even raise your hand as you lie there and say, thank you. Now I'm going to have a great sleep, you'll say. Dear ones, I finished this channel because my partner says, enough. <laughs> and so it is.